see that? Didn't the little Chinese man tell you not to feed him after midnight? Oh, come on, Lois. He's so cute. And he's hungry. What could happen? <laughs> Hello, I'm Fran Drasha. <laughs> you all staring at? Is there something wrong with... And he's looking at me, he's like, what are you, and he goes, 
uh, I'm going to the Golden Globes, I'll just see you at the party. And I go, no, Jerry, some of us watch from private homes. <laughs> we don't all get to go. But, um, so anyway, then I explain it again. I said, you have like little notes of party? And then he looks at me like I have antenna, like I'm a crazy alien. And uh, he just goes like this. That's about the last thing I have time for right now. You guys, I died. I'm just shit. So anyway, I go, um, and I, I just was like, okay, because you guys are like, okay, it's your show. And then um, he walks away, and then the script girl goes, he's creepy. So then, <laughs> so then he, sa he says to the crew, he says, okay, look, I'm going to go to the Globes tonight, so I only want to work an hour. So everybody has to do their scenes after I'm done, and I'm only going to work for an hour, and then I'm going to leave. And you know, there's big curtain work ethic. And then uh, I just, <laughs> I feel like the more, because like when you go in and you do like a little part on the show, it's, you know, it's kind of nerve wracking and stuff. So the more I started thinking about Jerry Seinfeld, like yelling at me and not saying, the, the more I started getting really angry. And then I was walking around all day, well, it was only an hour long day, but I was like walking around. <laughs> and then I was like walking around in my head, just like an insane person going, you know what? Fuck you, Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Except he doesn't know it and couldn't care less. So, <laughs> but I'm ahead with this thing. So anyway, um, so then um, actually an hour later he was saying goodbye to everyone. And they're saying good luck, good luck, and I was like, hmm. and uh, and then he turns to me and goes, and you, you want me to sign something? And then I was like, oh yes. So then he signed it, and then of course it was the big day of the Golden Globe party. So then, uh, but I was not going to care. So the next the next morning I go into work, and um, I was really uppity, and I was still in our big fight. And uh, and then he was actually really, really nice the second day, and I, and I think he knew he was he had been an asshole, so he walks in and he goes, um, oh, well, good morning, Kathy. And I was like, hmm, morning. And uh, he goes, like, he cares. And then he was like, and, like we do a take, and he goes, oh, you're very funny, Kathy. And I was like, hmm, well, he must have said he's famous. And then, um, and then uh, so we were like, still in a big fight, and then I was just thinking, oh, you think I'm just going to take you back, Jerry? Oh, and uh, but they're you and the child bride, that poor little girl running around with you. And uh, so, that's uh, um, that's just what's up. So, uh, and that's why I decided, woo, charge with the gavel. Guilty. So, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so anyway, then, like, the rest of the day, you know, by the end of the week, I actually yeah, end up starting getting along with him. I think he's really great. Okay, that's the end of the story. There's no big hitting. All right. Um, <laughs> and I'm working on it, but I can't help it. Ugh. So, one thing is, um, but I like them in many ways. Okay, so there's one. There's one. So, uh, one thing is, uh, I uh, went through this phase where I guess I was going through a bad phase with guys, you know, and I was getting sort of pessimistic about them, and I was thinking sometimes I was, it's like too much trouble to get laid, you know, because you have to go up with a guy and to go to dinner with them and listen to Jacobin's opinions, and I don't know that kind of time. So, um,
women for hire for men. You know, it's really hard to find like a straight woman looking for a straight man to fuck her for money. <laughs> so it's really if you want to bottom line it. So anyway, um, I said. <laughs> so then she goes, no, no, you have to look under sensual massage. Yeah, baby. And um, I said, okay, well, you know, I had only found two ads that looked like they were, you know, guys for me. So I, uh, I called up. Oh yeah, three-way calling to the best feature. Oh, love it. And so um, I had Janine on one line, and then I called the number, and this guy answers, and he goes, um, uh, hello, this is Philippe. I would like to give you a sensual massage, and I know I can make you feel good. Beep. So Janine and I both slam the phone down, call each other back, and she goes, he's the one! And, um, <laughs> what I love about that is that based on someone's outgoing message, you would decide whether or not they should come to your apartment and have sex with you. That's all the information I need. Got it? So, um, so then I, uh, I called my girlfriend Melanie, and I said, um, I'm getting a male prostitute. She said, you're perfect. And everyone was into it. And I said, um, but, you know, I know it's illegal, and what if my phone is bugged, and I go to jail? Can you imagine if I'm, if I'm a John? And so, um... <laughs>
and then he said, um, he says, and you know, I'm interested by this idea, and if you like, I could take you out for a drink, and maybe if you like me, I would be glad to give you a free massage. So I'm like, okay, now I just say 50 bucks. And then, um, and, he says, and then later, you know, we could do the other if you're interested. And I was so excited. So I said, okay, well, you know, may I call you back? And he said, oh, whatever you want. So I hung up, and I called Jenny, and I tell the story. And then she goes, this is my favorite thing. She goes, and that's how Kathy met her husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wouldn't that be a charming story for the So, um, so anyway, then I'm like all excited and stuff, but then the closer it gets to actually meeting point, the more freaked out I get. And then I'm thinking about that story Melanie told me about cops. And she said, you know, I so I said, tell me more about this cops thing with the prostitute the John. And she was telling me this horrible story about this prostitute that, like, you know, was killed by this John and he's stabbing and killed her. I was like, no, that could be me. And so then, like, a week later, <laughs> Peter calls me in complete innocence. And he says, oh, yes, hello, can you just believe? I was wondering if you thought about what we talked about. And then I just panicked and I go, stay away from me, you whore. And I was just like, oh, that's <laughs> I love you saying the job. 
judge said he was not guilty. Uh, what kind of government do you think we live in, idiot? Uh, we have something called a jury, which is faulty at best, but at least we have it. And then, like the judge said, hmm, not guilty? <laughs> you just said it like the judge said, oh, I'm guilty. Okay, fine. Um, I was really, really depressed, and I started watching the uh, trash talk shows compulsively because they made me feel a little bit better about myself. Okay, my favorite is Springer. I'm so done with Jerry. I can't even stand it. It's all about Jerry. Okay, so I was watching the Springer one, and you know the beautiful thing about Springer is there's always the thing that makes it, you know, better and superior to the other shows, like say 60 Minutes. <laughs> no, is um. There's always like this reveal about 40 minutes into the show. So they'll start the show with one topic, and then it goes crazy and goofy, and then there'll be something even worse at like 40 minutes into it. So I was watching this one about May December relationships, which I love as long as the woman is December. So I just love that so much. So it was about that, and they had, you know, the older women with the younger men. And they had this one couple, they, were the, they rocked so hard. The woman was named Patches. And the thing that was so great about that is no one ever acknowledged that she had the same name as a hobo's dog. So I was like, okay, Patch is on. And then her husband was Matt. Then they, so they had Patch and Matt, and then they had their family. And it was so great because her mom was a big, giant, fat woman, and she looked kind of like a drag queen. You weren't really sure if she was like a man or a woman. She was a big, fat, lots of makeup, and she had rose colored glasses and stuff. And um, then the husband, this is so typical and perfect, the husband was a little spindly guy with a western suit and a photo tie. <laughs> And she was great because she was clearly a biker chick, and she was um, wearing sort of a bad frilly dress that you know she bought in a panic, and it could barely hide her major tattoos. But for the Springer show, she's going to put on her dress. So, um, so they go on, and they're talking about you know the different relationship, you know the different the disparity in age, and then. Um, so that wasn't enough, you know. And the audience doesn't really like Patches, and here's why: Patches is completely drunk, drunk out of her mind. And she's got like this cheesy Buffon hairdo, and she's just sitting there on the panel like this. Smoking? Okay, so anyway, then we find out later in the show when it gets better. So then we find out later, and, and the, uh, the mom is, she's always yelling at Jerry, and she's using this voice every, no matter what she says. Jerry, what you don't know is, Patches is 43 years old, and Matt is 17! And I was like, And then, um... So, but then here's the reveal, and then, and then the mom goes, Jerry, what Patches hasn't said yet is, she has full-blown AIDS! Ah! And she goes crazy, we hate her, we hate her! And I hate her so much, and then here's the best part, Patches, I swear to God, this is her reaction. I died, and that was so awesome, but she's like, and then, uh, and then the mom goes like this, and Jerry, the other thing she didn't say is, that they have unprotected sex! Let me just say this about her. I love her. 
Okay, so anyway, it was, I, think, I think she's great. I think she is really great. Um, but unfortunately, the show was canceled because um, it sucked and no one watched it. So that's a deadly combo. Anyway, um, one thing that was fun about the show is uh, it had musicians on, right? So I got to um, meet all these rockers and stuff, which is great. And I decided that now I'm in the rock community. So hello. Anyway, um, uh, so uh, my job would be, I would sort of be the liaison between the cast and the rockers, which means I would just tease them and they would never know who I was or like me. So I, um, what, we had Salt and Peppa, they came on, and that was like, fun to meet them, but the weird thing is their names are Salt and Peppa, and it's just weird because they go like, hi, I'm, you know, Peppa, and you, you're like, hi, I'm a uh, chandelier, like you just make them up, you know, like, hi, because <laughs> you just like, Kathy's like super pedestrian. So anyway, um, but you know, just like this about Salt, Salt goes hot, hello, I'm Cheryl. Okay, FYI. Anyway, then, um, so they come on, and I was like, hi girls, what's going on? I did a scene with them, and then I just wanted to tease them, because I thought I'd maybe make them laugh, and I go, so you guys are rappers, right? And they go, yeah, and I go, so did you ever kill anyone? <laughs> and they so did not think that was funny. Um, so, uh, so then, so then, um, Alice and James came on, and I love them, I think they're so great. So, uh, they came on, and they are all, um, uh, big junkies, <laughs> that's what they are. And they're also, well, I, I guess I was supposed to say, I think they are, whatever. But anyway, they are. And so, um, well, actually, it's weird because the, the, the whole band isn't junkies. Pretty much just the singer Lane. And Lane came in, and he had hot pink hair, and he was in a Caesar, like that, which is God's yet today. I have had it with that Caesar. I don't care about Clooney and the whole gang, and it looks bad. So anyway, uh, the Caesar's got to go. We are not in ancient Rome. So, um, anyway, we had a Caesar, and, and then he had, like, track marks and everything. You know, it was, it was fascinating, but sad. So, uh, and the weird thing is... And unfortunately, I didn't know he was really a junkie, and so I um, was like teasing him about it. <laughs> and I was going, hey, whatever you do, don't you want to eat heroin and crack? And then he really was, I was like, oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what's so weird about the, the rockers is they're still functional. So they go on, and the other guys in the band are clean, and it's so kind of sad because they sort of act like Lane's codependent girlfriend. So he's always screwed up, and they're always like, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> and, um, and so he goes on, and he finishes the song, and he goes like this. Again, yeah! And then he could have just ticked him like a cow. He was just like, you know, he just sort of staggered off like old Aunt Sophie. Um, oh, okay, I feel, uh, sorry, all right, I will do this. These are, um, oh god, I don't think this is funny. These are, uh, the two funniest things a guy ever said to me in bed. All right, one of them was, uh, one of them was, I was, uh, this was the first time I slept with this one guy, and he was really great and cute and, and dreamy and nice, and, uh, he was, uh, he was, um, like, over me. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. But it was like, it was like pretty insertion. And um, <laughs> he was over me, and I was all happy because I love that feeling of looking at things. I'm like, oh, it's so, this is so much fun. And then he, um, right before we were gonna, he was gonna, you know, consummate or whatever, he goes like this <laughs> I'm really tiny. <laughs> Thank you so much and good night.